Hello, BMX nerds. Welcome back to another episode of Kanode Knows, brought to you by Dig BMX. This week on the show, we got Vish. You know him. You love him. Uh, he's filmed for Cult for years and uh, has recently kind of branched off to just do his own thing, and he's killing it. Yawn Media. Go subscribe to his YouTube channel. Um, he did a behind-the-scenes video for Dakota for his low and high vans part, which is fucking amazing, like taking you know hours of footage, condensing it into 10 minutes of a story. That was amazing, so... I actually reached out to him and told him how good that was when that dropped. And he just hit me up like a couple of days ago to ask to do this podcast. And he's always welcome here. He wanted to talk about his BMX event that's coming up on June 3rd at Epic Ride Shop. So stay tuned for that. And if you're in California, go attend that. He, we talk about all the all the big ideas that he has and how it came to be. And we yeah, we cover it pretty thoroughly in this. It's fun. I, I love Vish and uh, known him forever, like 14 years. So. It was good to catch up and chat, so hopefully you guys enjoy it too. That being said, make sure you like and subscribe, share the show with a friend, and go to rarlife.com and get yourself some green superfoods or some pea plant protein or some algae oil and uh, get your health right and use promo code Canode to get 15% off of whatever you get. Uh, that's enough for me. Let's get into this episode with uh, Vish. Oh, and by the way, I'm over bronchitis now. Like, this is the last day of being sick, so I'm stoked. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. Here's Vish. I got the notification. We're rolling. Mm-hmm. Hi, Vish. Hi. Hello, hello. What's so, up, w- So we are recording. Yep. It's live, All right. baby. All right. Good, 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 good. Oh, good. long time no see. When did we do yeah. the last one? Um. Well, it was probably like... In the beginning of the year, I think, or no, actually, maybe in December late last year or something. Yeah, yeah, dude, it's kind of crazy how time flies. It's already almost June. That's pretty nuts. Yeah, that is, uh, that is nuts. And like for me, um, it's flying even faster because I uh, tried to launch this event thing with uh, oh yeah a, a, a month, and then I'm like feeling like oh yeah, you know, I have time, and I just look at a calendar today and go oh. I have one, I have one thing (laughs) built, uh, and it's only part of the thing that it is. So there's a lot I have to get done, um, which is part of why I wanted to talk to you on the pod. So tell me about it. (laughs) What's been going on with it? Um, what is it for people who have never heard of it and, uh, how did it start and where are you at with it? Okay. So, um, well, first off, thanks for having me on here because, uh, it seemed like kind of a short notice thing. I kind of invited myself because I'm, <laughs> Fuck yeah, I yeah, I'm trying to get some hype up, you know, I'm open for all self invitations, too, especially it, for me. <laughs> You're always feels, welcome. Well, thank you. But it feels like it's uh, it seems like in this day and age, it'd be really easy to get the word out about things. But also it seems like it's harder um because you're kind of flooded with a ton of stuff all yeah. the time. So um I figured, uh, you know, as much as I'm putting stuff on Instagram and, and people are sharing it and stuff, like you never really get uh, coming on something like this could be a, a nice chance to explain what's going on and, and what I'm trying to do. And, Hell yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So um, for people who have no idea what I'm going on about, uh, yeah, I'm who are to, you, dude? <laughs> not, not who am no, I? I know. I'm just kidding. The thing talk I'm trying, the, the thing I'm here to kind of talk about and, uh, and promote it, I guess. But, um, so uh dude i'll actually i'll like run this back so that it like um okay i'm just gonna give you a heads up if i'm like burping a lot it's because i got this weird (laughs) stomach problem where i have this gird thing (laughs) and i have to like fix my things well i'll give you a heads up if i'm coughing a lot it's because i got bronchitis and i got hot water to drink so we're both just expelling things out of our bodies let's go <laughs> well, i'm trying to keep it i'm trying to but like somebody's gonna go what's going on with that guy and it's calmed down quite a bit but it, uh i'm so, at one point dude i went to a doctor i was like Fuck. um this is rough so um <laughs> hey doc i'm burping a lot what the hell's going on yeah and they said we know what that is right away um and they said you got stomach acid problems so hmm. that's how this spot star now what did right they tell here. you to take apple cider vinegar no, that? um, they were trying to put me on pills and stuff, and I went over to the internet and tried to figure out better. Yeah, doctors always want to put you on pills. To eat and probiotics and yeah, that's so, what I like to hear. Get on uh, apple cider vinegar, dude. That shit. Helps. Which you know is, I've been eating uh straight up uh like raw broccoli and uh, oh. uh sour 
sauerkraut. Like I just, I'm back nice. on intermittent fasting. I'm keeping it like low carb, but not necessarily keto. I'm not yeah. really trying to have like all the fats and stuff, like, especially from like meat, like, and things like that. But I am having avocado and stuff like that. like macadamia nuts. And, Fuck yeah. You know, just trying keeping the carbs low. Cause my body just doesn't like to react to carbs very well, even yeah. though my taste buds love them. Um, but uh, this is, we have trailed off from what I was supposed to be <laughs> We always talk about, about like, food, bro. Long ago. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Um, <laughs> all right, so, 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 so. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rewind a little What's bit. What's the event Wait, called? You vape mid-pod? Fuck yeah, I vape mid-pod. What? This is my house. <laughs> <laughs> it's my house. You're coming right. in here. Let's go. Um. All right, so, ready? Here comes a burp. <laughs> um, I told you they're gonna happen. Uh, oh, all right, I so love it. when I uh, when I was like, all right, man, it's time to go freelance, we're gonna we're gonna just get out there and hustle jobs. Um, I, at the same time, I started uh, doing the on media thing, uh, as like, like a YouTube channel and like a place where I thought I'd put like my work between BMX stuff and other jobs I get and like putting like behind the scenes things and all that kind of stuff, and then. Um, I started doing a bunch of work, but like, I wasn't finding the time or the motivation to do as much with the yawn stuff. Like there's a big gap course, like, right yeah. away. I was doing some stuff and then it was like mellowing out and like, um, you know, I always wanted to do like a jam and I felt like maybe I was drifting away from BMX a little bit, even though I was riding as much as I could and, um, you know, still being involved in a in a way i but the uh, level of involvement just, that you had before is like everything is going to feel like you're not involved now you know but you know it was it was good to like test the waters and realize like what the things i enjoy doing the things i don't enjoy doing and so at, at one point i had a lot of work lined up and it kept me like busy um but to the point where i wasn't putting as much into the yawn stuff as i wanted to so i uh i was literally thinking one night about like um uh building like this ramp like i've had this idea to do this like uh picnic table like um contest where like it's it's all these different like picnic tables that like some are like all warped and it kind of looks like a like an alice in wonderland like whoa but like that's a so dope it's idea. like you reference to something that we the reference is something we could ride, but like one of them actually is like warped, like a kicker. And they, but I always thought that the table was a, was a pretty cool, like, um, like obstacle. Yep. As far as like what it could be, but it just doesn't ride right because like they're too close to each other or like, you know, it's just, it's weird, but it's like, it's a stack ledge setup. So I always just was like, I wonder what you could do with this. And then I just got on the iPad, started drawing out like different things you could do with it. And, then that led to me thinking about like, oh, it'd be sick to make this and have an event. And then it just kind of stopped because I went like, what am I going to do? Like, how are you going to do an event? And then the, the idea wouldn't leave my head. Like, it was just like, okay, um, what do do with it? Then it turned into this idea of like, how do I take it and turn it into like um, three separate ledges that kind of look like a picnic table. But then when you move them, you could like grind to grind to grind and they could like, like, change around and stuff and so i kept thinking about that and then i started thinking like maybe i could just do a jam and then and then like i thought of this thing like i'll just call it something like super like generic and i was like oh, i'll just call it the bmx i like wrote that in the ipad and i started like doodling with the thing you cut out what what is it called and then at some point i just like i bet if kind of generic name uh Am I still cutting out? There you are. You're back. All right. What's it called? I'm back. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> You're good. Oh, man, <laughs> my momentum is gone. Tell me what it's called. Um. All right. the The name of it is called the BMX event. Okay. Did got I it. get that? Did it yes. get in there this time? It's in there. All okay. right. Let's go. So I just wanted to. I wanted a very generic name. Yep. Um. Because at the time I thought like. I don't know what I thought to be honest, but anyways, I was like, I'll just do this. Like this, I, I don't know. They're just, it's all of us just doodling on an iPad and like taking thoughts and just getting them out into like seeing it into something. And like, so then all of a sudden I was like, what could I, I, I could just do this through yawn. And instead of thinking like, 
oh, let's go make videos. I'll do it like a practical thing and make videos of what I'm doing. Cause I was having trouble like thinking of what will I go make a video of, but instead of put the objective of trying to put the jam on now, I'm like almost forcing myself to make videos. And I felt like if I could get into the storytelling of like, let's start with the idea and walk it through to the end. And then there's this big jam at the end and everyone's at and having fun at, um, that would help motivate me to make videos and, and actually like do something for the community. And I'm kind of doing something for myself in the fact that I'm getting into, uh, you know, working on the YouTube stuff more. Fuck yeah. Um, and I've loved every video you've posted. So that's kind great. of, that's kind of, oh, thank you. And I feel like I'm like figuring them out each time to make them better and better. And like, um, tomorrow we're going to get coping with, uh, me and Max are going to go to this metal yard. And so that's like another episode of, of the series coming through. And, um, the other part that I thought was kind of interesting is there's, you know, that big challenge of like, well, it would take money to do it. Like, yeah, we could bring out some things that we already have, some ledges and rails. But if I wanted to make these exclusive, like new ramps that are like kind of the reason like that I wanted to do it is because I can't get the ideas of building these ramps out of my head. Yeah. Then let's see if I can't crowdfund it. And so then I went with that approach and that has been pretty awesome because you see people like, who aren't even in the state who aren't even going to be at the event sending money just to see it happen. And my hope is that when I build these ramps and, and part of their design is that they fit, like I have a 15 passenger van and I'm going to like take everything out of it and it's just going to be emptied. Everything is designed to flatten down and fit into that van. And so when I'm done with the Epic jam, I can go out to King's Ride Shop or I can go to another bike shop and do another jam. And then I could get like other bike companies involved. And that's why like the the big idea of it um, is that it can it can go around to other places. That's so, um, dumb. so the uh, epic one on June 3rd is just is like the testing ground for it to work. And it feels like it's going to happen. Like not that the event's not going to happen, but like the whole idea is going to be successful. And I think I can then take it to other places. Um so, but yeah, I don't know if you, if you watch the video with me and Dak building the ledge, mm -hmm. it like goes from a flat ledge to an up ledge. Well, yeah. that's like the main, that's the main part of the picnic table. We still have to build the two side benches that go with it. But the way that that could like change up each time I go to a different event or a different bike shop, I can change like how it is, or just like, at least gives you options to do stuff um, differently at each in each jam and uh with the other ramps that i'm trying to make they should also kind of like be able to be configured different like i'm going to build these um these long like 10 foot long ledges that have wedges on one side and they're like going to be um pretty close together um so you could like grind to hop over grind you know like down like a narrow channel yeah and then you could like hop into the bank or maybe you can come out of it like i think that like the the way that you could ride it is like pretty diverse and fun and like I had a pretty, hopefully pretty like easy to ride. You know what I'm saying? Like something anyone, anyone could have a good time on, hopefully. So, Love that. Um, so, so yeah, where are you like, at now with it? What's, uh, the, what's the current status? Well, the current status is that we built like the hardest thing that, to build, like building the morphing ledge with Dak, like him coming through and like figuring that out with me. And then his like craftsmanship touch on making sure because that I wanted it to work with no tools and it works with no tools. You can lift off the top part, yeah, turn dude. the boxes it's around so and sick. smash them back down. It's so and, sick. um, and it works. The rest of them are pretty straightforward. I'm probably going to build them myself. Mostly, um, Max is helping me when it comes to like some of the metal stuff. Cause he's going to grind some stuff down and maybe like reconfigure some things. So, um, the more like crowdfunding stuff that comes in, the better I can make the event. If I got, you know, I'm trying to get like at least three things that are, fresh for the event and i have you know we have some Brussels rails and um there's like a colt ledge from colt uh that we still have and then there's like a quarter pipe from uh when there was the 1030 d premiere i don't know if you are familiar with that or not but mm -hmm. um you know people have ramps around they're going to help bring to the thing but like i'm trying to get this one like this particular setup that would be in my van that would be going around and then i want to make this kicker setup that almost like 
folds down flat and i'm i'm not even going to try and explain it because it's <laughs> you like, need some it's visual like, representation you, to explain yeah, it. <laughs> exactly so that's i mean that's why i built these cardboard models like mm-hmm. if you watch if you watch you know the, like I what i call to pitch, mention those it's the so pitch sick. video it's like i couldn't figure out on the ipad when i was drawing it how i'm gonna, like okay i get that it sits like this and i get that it sits like this but does it really and so like i just was like let me just try and that's why like once i made that model it was like okay how do i make this happen and then that's where the crowdfunding thing came in and that's where like um you know and t- so to be honest um what's cool about it is like just by calling it the bmx event and doing the crowdfunding it is supported by bmx like bmxers have bought shirts or donated money yeah and on top of that like that that got me to a pretty like a pretty far place as far as being able to finance like the wood for the that main bench thing but to kind of bring the other ones to life i didn't really think that uh, that the crowdfunding would go that far and it to be honest it it hasn't i definitely appreciate anybody who has like um donated or bought anything because that is what's getting this whole thing going but what's cool is the day that i dropped the thing a couple companies reached out to me and they're like hey we want to support it too and i was kind of like well let's see what the crowdfunding does and then we'll see what like i kind of need to like fill in the gap in a way or like like because i I didn't know what was going on and so um i haven't uh put it out there yet but now that uh we're doing this um we have colt supporting the event we have fiend supporting the event we have oss supporting the event and so they're the official like sponsors for this round of um the bmx event and it's just like like i said they're they're putting in some money to uh help kind of just get the last of the finances in order and any more stuff that i get like donations or sales wise i'm still trying to just put towards the event because um, i'm finding out things like paint is very expensive but i'd like to paint them and have them look nice and like if i get the money for another obstacle i'm just going to build another obstacle so um how did you figure out how much this shit is going to cost like the the more the more well you built the hardest one to build already right but what's like what is the total cost of all this shit that you're thinking um i don't know we don't know yet we don't know (laughs) yet we there, there is like um about 500 bucks into the like uh first obstacle and then that's not really including the coping which yeah. is kind or of the paint turning right? out turning out to be another like 500 or so and so then there's um i don't know it's it's, it's gonna Shit be adds like up. a, yeah. a 1500 to the 2000 ish kind of deal um but at the same time people have uh donated some wood which is like uh which is really cool and i can i feel like when it comes down to it i can either i'm gonna have to just like pay for some stuff which is fine i've already paid for some i don't know if you saw my door dashing video i mean that was only that was only 100 bucks raised but at the same time i put that 100 i normally would put to my bills to uh to that and then i spent a little bit more on some other things but like if it's like it's not going to be just a table and obviously these sponsors um are kind of like making that a lot easier on me like that's a it's a burden and and it's it is the bmx event and they're part of bmx and they're being represented and i i like was really happy that like they approached me about doing this stuff i didn't have to go reach out and i felt like just having like those three sponsors that i kind of look at as like um like the bmx event is made possible by uh by you guys the bmx riders and supported by and then colt Fiend, yeah oss right and again if i go do something else i would love to switch it up and if another brand would like to be involved we could repaint the ramps do something different get different different crews of people and have it switch up so that it's more but like i don't know that this is just how it's playing out and it was kind of the idea in my head and it kind of is rolling the way i was kind yeah, of hoping dude. it would roll so the fact that um, you already that you and dick Dak built that one that you just played with models on your desk filming and then it's already like come to life that's so dope it's rad yeah i love it 
Yeah. Uh, and what's, I, what's and next? If, if, well, I got to build the, the benches for it, but I mean, those are just rectangles, right? Like I just build some rectangles and we put some coping on them and it all should, that should work out fine. And then the building, the wedges, which is crazy. The actually some of the, one of the things that got donated was plywood, like, but only a couple pieces of plywood. And I was looking at them. And so I wanted to make a tent, these 10 foot long wedge ledge ramps, which is kind of an odd length. Yeah. Normally everything's an eight foot. And I was looking at the plywood that got dropped off and I was like, this looks, wait, is this 10 foot? And I have two pieces of 10 foot plywood, which will literally be perfect for the slant pieces. And then and I went to my dad's house uh, for Mother's Day. I was hanging out with the family and I'm looking at him like, why is there a 20 foot long two by six in your backyard? Like, I was like, what do you, what is that for? What do you, can I take that? And so I'm going to go next week, cut that in mm -hmm. half. And that's like the top portion. Um, so the Perfect. whole piece will at least be solid and we could just, we don't have any gaps or anything and I don't have to go buy a uh, uh, 10 foot long two by six. Yeah. So I was like, okay, this is kind of working out. And literally the van is about 14 feet deep. So I have like uh, a few, well, actually, no, it's like 12 feet deep. I have two feet left over when oh. I put that in there, but the wedges, like when I build them, it, you know, if you put them like opposite of each other, they just make a square. Yeah. And so like that would just slide in this way the other thing comes apart and you can just like put the thing on the bottom stack up those boxes and these other couple ramps and like rails and stuff that i'll have with me should all just like fit it's gonna make it's gonna max out the van but like is when you like if i film a video of me pulling everything out it's gonna be like one thing another thing another thing another yeah. thing it's gonna be pretty cool i think like, <laughs> like a mary just, poppins van <laughs> exactly instead That's of dope. instead of a, a bag full of sugar or whatever mm -hmm. <laughs> That's amazing, dude. And um, it's on so, uh, yeah. June 3rd at Epic it's, BMX. Yeah? Yes. And like, um, you got some people I out really here in Arizona. They're hitting me up like, are you going to the Epic BMX jam on June 3rd? Like people in Arizona are going to travel really? out for it. Yeah. The hype is real, dude. I think you're See, that's under why, aware. That's why, like, that's why I've... a lot of people are stoked hmm. on it, but they don't well, like, message you I, that they're stoked. It feels you know? like. I definitely have had a lot of like good response and, uh, but that's, you know, locally. So I, I, I had no idea people in other States are even like considering coming out, um, yeah, which just makes me like, want to make sure that everything rides good and it is solid, uh, like, and that people are having a good time are almost like unthought of in the like event style things, like getting, getting local, like food vendors, like food trucks people to show up and stuff so that like if somebody's hungry they can eat something like yeah i'm like okay what do i really have to do and for myself like um i believe <laughs> this could be news to uh grant c but the way what phil was telling me is grant c was going to help film the event <laughs> so he might if he listens to this he might be finding out that <laughs> um but like that helps because i might just be on the mic kind of like hosting and like making sure like everyone's having a good time and like doing best tricks. And like, I don't know, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out all that stuff to hopefully, hopefully by the end of next week, all the ramps are done. Everything's good. And I have one week to kind of put all the pieces together. And then I do want to try and film a session. Um, so people can see the ramps being ridden. So they're like, all right, yeah, we're coming that out. Would like, be cool. gonna be sick. Like so that. that's, that's what, that's what I'm hoping for. Um, and yeah, so I don't know. It's, but to be honest, like I'm excited for the feedback I have gotten. Uh, it does feel like, um, like BMX riders are really psyched. It's gotten me super motivated. I've not been like this, like, like driven in a while, like to the, yeah. be like, all right, we got to get on this. We got to get it like, um, going and I can't let anybody down really, you know, like, so, and then again, I have to thank the, the sponsors that, chipped in too because it's really cool not only to have some financial help but to just know that they wanted to be a part of it and back it um and then you know their crews will come out and like i don't know it just it feels it feels good and it feels supportive and that's why i think the bmx event is it's a, a kind of a funny dumb name but like i'm i'm liking how it's like shaping up like fuck yeah it's it, if it feels it feels pretty cool to me. So so if somebody's and then, listening and they want to pitch in, where do they go? Uh, yawn dash media dot com has uh, anything that if you like 
bought a shirt or anything, uh, all the money goes to help get the ramps done. Um, and then I'm pretty sure the links, like the Cash App, uh, PayPal, and Venmo are all, are they, they think they're on there. I don't exactly know, but they are in the links of the YouTube videos. So oh, if you yeah. go to the YouTube channel um, and you click in the descriptions, they'll be there. Um, then I might not have put those th- those links. Dude, on I love website. that you have the BMX event T-shirts. That's fire. Yeah. So anything yeah. you buy, that like at the moment, I've, I'm doing other jobs and other video work that is and door dashing, that is just like helping me kind of get by. So for me, it was like, yeah, people could donate if they wanted to donate, but if somebody did want to buy something, I felt like it'd be cool to make a shirt that was like okay i bought this shirt to contribute but also if you bought like this shirt or you bought just the like regular circle shirt or hoodie or even something simple there's a clock on there if you wanted a clock um i like that yeah (laughs) you can just whatever it is like there's a clock on there if you wanted a clock (laughs) it's yeah there's some there's some random more random i might buy the clock but there we go i could see it sitting right here i could see it sitting right back there yes sir but exactly so you could get something and your money will go towards the event or if you just want to donate and you know i've seen five dollars come through i've seen 25 dollars come through i've seen a hundred dollars come through um, Damn, who's the big baller chipping in a hundred bucks that's awesome let's go well i suck at na- remembering names and this would be the perfect time to shout <laughs> it out but it was literally the first this is what this is what made me go like up and down it was the first donation i got was a hundred bucks and i went oh nice nice it's gonna work and then it and then it went real quiet and then i went okay well we got a 100 bucks and then it all started rolling in but hell yeah dude that's what i'm saying is like getting the info out there but i guess i could have just called you on the phone and been like hey are, pe- are people in arizona coming out and then i would have maybe thought that i don't need to do all this uh, <laughs> podcast stuff but yeah i think a whole little squad is gonna mob out there i would if, if i could wow. but i'll be i'll be working <clears throat> I just bought the clock, by the way. You guys should all go online and buy a shirt or a clock. Oh. Clock is dope. Dude, how are you doing the shirt? I want to make shirts. And I've been asking people, like, are you doing, like, per order? Well, this drop shipping is, or whatever? This is a good time to talk about this. So right now, we are on drop shipping. It's, it's a print-to-order service because I can't have – I don't have the money to put in the overhead. To yeah, neither do I. I don't want to do that. Shirts and stuff like that. So Sick. you can get you can get yourself set up on Printify if you wanted to, and there's plenty of other options Printify. out there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, my girlfriend is the one who has really helped on the end that I don't know about. I make the videos. I'll help build the ramps. I'll organize the thing, and she's connecting all the dots of getting artwork done, getting. Uh, uh all these like links set up getting all this stuff to like work she made the website she like, yeah kind of does all this stuff and as she's working her regular job she just goes okay and then like spends her evening helping me and i'm like what this is too good so shout out Diana. Really, really, re- no her name's Diana. <laughs> Diana. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i got the first part right <laughs> you Dan. did it yes it's 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 its own unique name and uh plenty of people struggle with Deandra. it but... Diana, my bad <laughs> <laughs> but anyways yes That's she's she's awesome. been a, she's been a huge help now here we go with the next part uh you know dylan ambrose good old dylan yeah, ambrose yeah. so he's got he's working in the press lbc running up doing shirts well, this event is the perfect time to kind of like actually dive into like, all right, I know some people probably want to buy some shirts on hand, but I don't have anything for the Printify thing. So I hit him up. He's working on a shirt. I'm actually working on a video of me making the shirt because the the way I'm making the shirt is um, like the design for it. It just says yawn on the back, but it's made out of, you know, those things that are like, they're like uh, like a rectangle and they're full of pins and you push your hand into them and yeah like, yeah so i cut out cardboard letters and then i push the pins in i push the cardboard letters into the thing and then i took pictures of that and then now i'm putting that into the computer and processing it up and uh there's just i'm just going to turn it black and white and it'll be the back so it'll have this like weird textured look to it but That's instead sick. of like doing any kind of actual graphic design i'm doing like practical I'm very yeah. arts and craftsy. I like, I like, I like doing yeah. that kind of You're stuff. You're making the shit with your hands. 
So yeah, I'm not super good with computers, even though I do a lot of editing. That's about it. I don't know much yeah. else when it comes to that stuff. I'm not great with typography or anything like that. So I feel like if I just make something like this and then like get that put in on a shirt, and then if I put the video behind it too, people might think that's kind of interesting and then be like, oh, this is the thing you made and I'll buy the shirt. And but yeah, I mean, all, and all the <clears throat> all the sales um, at the uh, all the sales at the uh, event. Uh, I mean, any shirt you buy, I mean, it kind of, I'm hoping to recoup the cost on, on that at least. And yeah. um, if not, if not I make a little, because the, I feel like anything I make in that regard, I can freeze me up to then do more yawn stuff. Like right. if, um, because I have all types of things you see, do you see a uh, Dax? Um, yeah, I think, you might even text me about it. Dax uh behind, behind the, scenes. the scenes video. Yeah, fuck yeah, I saw it. Uh, yeah. for his Vans part. Yep. I that's on my list I wanted to talk to you about. Well, I'm trying to do more of that. I'm trying yeah. to do more more of those kinds of things. So the the more yawn starts to run and function in a way that like can offset uh some expenses and things like that, the sooner I can like put more focus into it and start creating more like documentary style or like just different different kinds of content for uh for BMX related stuff. Hopefully, yeah. You know. Like how involved is that behind the scenes video? It looks, it seems like oh, it was my God. a it was... year of behind the scenes <laughs> shit. Like at so, least tell me so, about that. Um, at the tail end, about a month left of filming, I think, uh, maps and vans and Dakota were like, yeah, you should get in on like, just kind of getting out on these last sessions with us and start filming, uh, start filming these, uh, these sessions were about to wrap the video up. Um, and at the same time, uh, I was making that song for the end of his video, the second song that's in Dax's part. Yeah. Um, so I was like pretty heavily involved in like in that tail end of like just kind of focusing on DAC work. Again, another reason that I'm like uh not able to do as much stuff on Yon, but it's fine. Like it doing BMX work is doing BMX work, right? Like making a song and doing that stuff. I just need to get better. I mean, I did do a behind the scenes thing of that, making that song, but I kind of like just randomly made it and I didn't do it as like in depth as I wanted to do it. But anyways, I'm getting off on, on a different, you thing, got but... high standards for everything you do, man. It's awesome. <clears throat> well, I want it to be effective. Like if yeah, I want it to be like motivating for somebody to watch it or like, they feel like some type of way, I mean, they get even hate it, I guess, but I just don't really <laughs> want them to be yeah. bored. Like, I don't want people to just be like, eh, what was that? Whatever. And so um, with the DAC project, like going into it, I was just like, how can I do behind the scenes and tell a story? I mean, first off, like I just respect DAC so much for like his work ethic and like what he does for putting into videos. And I was like, I really have to put like, why does DAC do this? Like the amount of spot searching he does, the amount of just like dedication and the amount of like, the amount of times he's even turned down something that you've been like, oh, that that would be a cool clip. He'd be like, eh. yeah, just because to his standard, it's got to be to a, a certain like level, you know. And um, so, yeah, he just lives that stuff. And I wanted my, to do my best to 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 do that. And so I like I just filmed the process. And, and at one point while we were filming it, I was like, hey, let me just film you while we're driving. Like, I'll mic you up and and we'll just get some 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 talking points, right? I loved it. This show and is so cool. So we, we did that and that's pretty much what I had. And then, you know, I'm out here, you know, when I was doing cold stuff all the time, it was like, film the trick, film the trick, film the trick, which is great. That was the job. That's what I wanted to do. And at one point I was like, man, I'm kind of over this. And so then I was like, I want to film behind the scenes. And then I realized filming behind the scenes is so hard because <laughs> yes. I'm watching Calvin and he's like doing his thing. Yeah, I have to film constantly. I film yep. all day long because you don't know what's going to happen. Yep. And you're filming every try. And then after it, you don't get to stop the button like, and then wait for him to go back up the stairs. He might trip up the stairs and you'd be like, oh, that's funny. I need that clip. But like, you have to film everything. And I was like, this is actually harder. Like, yep. but at the same time, when I get to like go through the footage and, and start laying it out and like the storytelling process, I'm like, I'm like, all right, I do. I do really like this. Like, so that was a good, a good example of me getting into more of that storytelling versus just like the trick, which 
I felt like when I used to edit BMX videos like that, I was kind of trying to do storytelling if I could, like in some way. I, um, and, you know, that's maybe me overthinking it when I'm editing and nobody else is picking it up on it. They just see that was a clip. That was a clip. Well, that was a clip. But I see like it goes like it's, it's right. saying something, yeah. but, you know, no, maybe maybe it's not really like that. Um, but anyways, yeah. back to back to Dex, like think video um it it started out as an hour long uh Damn. not not like not like this is the video it's an hour long but like i could just run the more timeline. about i could run more about this part or i could run more about this part and so it took forever to cut it down to like what makes sense what makes sense what makes sense and then like and then like how am i going to order it up in all these different days and like what, what are the things and like so then the next part is I made like a rough cut with no music and it kind of looked like the video you see, but it was a little bit longer and it was a little bit different. And I was like, you know what? I need Dak to give me the pieces I don't have in the voiceover, but I'm just going to put it on the iPad and have him watch it. And instead of like sitting, him talking, in, and instead of sitting yeah. him there, I'm just going to like let him react to it because he hasn't even like seen it like, uh that's dope in that way so he i just filmed him reacting to it and stuff like where he's laughing and he's like because he fell off the rail and he's all mingling he's like he's just like reacting to it like genuinely and then like i went back and was like okay well tell me like talk to me a little bit more about this and talk to me a little bit more about that and then you started going into those places and um and then it turned the next part was going into making the music and like trying to figure out how it was going to like bring it up and down and all this stuff. And that to me was where I started like kind of losing my mind because <laughs> really, well, I'm making the songs and I'm, it's like, it's like a different job. Cause now I'm worried yeah. about the quality of the song. Does it sound corny? And it, in some places I'm just like holding notes down on a keyboard and so, and I'm like thinking, like I start thinking people are going to watch this and going, what is he doing? What? It's not that dramatic. <laughs> like, thinking like I'm trying to like make a movie when I should just be like, it could be raw. Like a lot of people just make them raw, which is, which is fine. Cause that's how it is. But I was like, I want to enhance it a little bit. And then it's like, when he's crashing, I'm playing like on the yep. drums. I'm like, ah, and I'm like, it, I might be doing too much. And then when it came out and I got the feedback that like, it went so well with it, I went, okay, good. Okay. I'm not, but the problem is I didn't, I held it to myself for too long before letting other people see it that yeah. I started like taking it apart. Over analyzing it. Yeah. Yes. And then I know exactly how that feels. Yeah. Dude. And then the Fucking piece, it. the piece that was like the, the part that really made it work was when I decided, Oh, let me just put these graphics in between because when I didn't have the graphics, I felt like I was kind of confused. And then it either like, made some humor or it just moved us to the next thing. And then I was able to shorten everything down a little bit more Smart. and, and it made it. So you're just moving through and, you know, and the goal for me is even with yawn stuff is I would love to see somebody who loves BMX to enjoy it. And somebody who is just getting into it or not that familiar with it can f at least follow along and, and kind of understand it right fuck yeah i you so, could show that to my mom and she'd be like this is awesome you know like it's storytelling and the way you put it together was so good i i texted you i was like this this is incredible like it's top notch and it, well, you can tell thank, how much effort you put into it thank you because it it felt like even this is one of the things that happened the day i sent it to mapstone and dak to watch it is no one got back to me right away oh fuck and that, that's torture and that hurt my Just i was sitting like there like waiting come on come on come on come i was on, like come on, come i'm on, come on, come on. i'm done like not even a, like dude that's cool i'll hit you up later about it like <laughs> like it was just just ghost. <laughs> and that and that is that is fine when you realize that they love it and they are busy which i know they're busy that's why i kept telling myself no, no they're just doing stuff they they're doing stuff like stop like yeah no, but your fine. brain's going they fucking hate it dude they hate it they i hate tried it. too hard i tried too hard <laughs> in my in my mind they're talking about what they're gonna need to tell me <laughs> that yeah. that's what i'm thinking i'm like okay you need to take out that stupid dramatic song you made and uh cut this out the other thing that made i think made the video kind of cool was that calvin sent me raw timelines 
So I got to like introduce the video as something that like you referenced this whole video and then it moved into like what it took to make the video. Yeah. It didn't just start out with him like falling or something. It started out with clips from the video um, kind of recut and repurposed into a different like way. So you like I would think you would even want to go watch the video just from the beginning of it. And then the other part that I was concerned about being like um, like too much was putting in two clips he didn't make but to me that that mattered a lot because like that he had to work that hard for the clips he did make too yeah that like there's work you don't know goes into it or the, like the rail to gap that like yes he didn't he flipped that over. got away <laughs> yeah, dude. yeah he said he blacked yeah. out like he didn't realize that he actually got off the bike like it was that so was crazy. that was that was weird because he rolls he gets up and he walks away and in my head i'm like editing already i'm like oh there Oh, he's okay yeah that's <laughs> painful but he's gonna go get it and then it was another defeat and he had not filmed his ender and i was just like like in my head i can't tell him what to do but it's like bro we should go film your ender tomorrow and get that out of the way and yeah. then let's go get the rest <laughs> of the stuff because you know i know you got that like i know because it was already he was showing me it it was figured out yeah. but he was like putting it off a little bit and which is what he has to go through right you to... influenced him telekinetically then because he came to that conclusion himself didn't he like he he um, moved on from the rail right he moved on to the from the rail knowing yeah. he wanted to get other stuff but i don't think at that moment he decided that he was going to go get the end okay word, yeah i think he wanted to go get something else yeah like maybe the thing into the ditch but it all worked out where i think when we talked it was like hey let's just go get that let's just go get the ender and Fuck everything yeah. else will be cherry on top so Dude, what a treat um, so many people would be like would pay money to just be a fly on the wall while dakota's filming clips you know like that's top of the game that's getting to watch michael jordan shoot free throws you know that's fucking awesome well uh, you mentioned that it took you forever to take it from 60 minutes down to 10 minutes how long is forever like how long did did it take editing this shit probably took you a long time how long did it take well it, i feel like it came out in the beginning of april or something right like i, I don't think. know let's see um when did, when did she come out I can't remember, but I know his video came out in the in the beginning of March. I think on March seventh, his video came out, and we had already that video. The video was already done, so I was already in the editing process in the end of February. It came out two weeks ago. What? Yeah. May first, May beginning of May. This video. Okay. Came out. More important okay. than anything else, you guys should go watch if you haven't. More yeah. important than anything wow, else. Wow, really? Yeah. Dang, I thought it was. I thought it was longer than that. May first, time flies, but it also it doesn't. It does. I guess <laughs> it does. May first, it came out. Hmm. Yeah. Well, so that came out. That came out May first. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking oh, okay. at the date right now. Because I announced the BMX event thing on the third. Because then I had exactly a month to do it. So, so I'm sure you had the video done before <laughs> it came out on our BMX's yeah. YouTube. Yeah, but like not that long beforehand because I remember when we finished it, I got in touch with Fudger and I think we we're going to put it up on a Friday and we switched it to a Monday. And now I probably talked to him on a Wednesday about it. So yeah, it was very pretty quick in that yeah. regards. Um, so that's wild. Um, dude, time does fly. Because then we dropped the what you're calling the backyard video i was like what are you talking about backyard <laughs> video? i was like the backyard jams from back in the day what are you just reminiscing i was like what are you what are you talking about nope the one with mr watts and in pat casey's backyard that you made that is fucking insane dude i, I want well let's, let's well, well we'll talk about that after we finish we can talk COVID. about that in a second that one i feel like that one has less to do with me and a lot to do with watts and a lot to do with pat and a lot to do with all the homies over there fuck yeah uh, I just want to know what it was like to be there. But how long yeah. did it take to edit this Dakota video? Well, I guess I started in in February, or we'll say at the beginning of March, and okay. then I pretty much all the way through April. I it wasn't done when I went to Swamp Fest, and I filmed like a documentary thing for Swamp Fest um, that isn't out, but that's intentional. I talked to Trey about it, and we have a particular date to put it out nice. um, to kind of use as hype for next year. Perfect. So instead of and gives you time to putting edit. out <laughs> yeah yeah and and i you know dax video was a testing ground for me to make like a documentary like kind of thing and so now i'm gonna take what i have because i spent like um 
I spent 10 days in Florida to shoot that because they were pouring cement. Yeah. And I had a, I wanted to be there for them pouring cement because that was such a big moment. And what I saw now, I guess we'll pretty much talk about the small fest thing now. So <laughs> kind, of, yeah, let's go. kind of going into the documentary style stuff yeah. is that, is that, um, uh, how far Swamp Fest has come. And it's another thing, in my opinion, this is what I talked to Trey about that is brought to you by BMX. Like it's starting to morph into to, like YouTubers coming and like other people just coming to watch. And, you know, there's skateboarding involved and there's like, there was a loop water slide and like, like other things happening. Yeah. But like the majority of it is BMX. It's brought to you by BMX and that's going to be at the forefront of it. And that's what we're trying to deliver in this like documentary. And it's not going to necessarily be some big like hour long or half hour long even thing, but catching the building process. And then as I lay it out and kind of look at what, um, what I can do to kind of shape it from the event it first was to all the challenges he's done to like how it's coming about now and, and where it's going. Um, that's kind of like the angle I'm I'm trying to go with it. So I've looked at a lot of the footage. I haven't like fully lined it up, but pretty much after the BMX event, it's like time to start doing and really getting into uh, getting the Swamp Fest video going. Okay. So I'm, I'm super excited because I think there's a really cool story to tell. There's all these people who help like, um, just like make it happen. And I, I don't know, I think, I think there's, I mean, for instance, when I look through like one of the, one of the first days, like I, I pulled up a clip and I look at it and Trey's sitting on the ground with duct tape, taping a hose together so that he can make a hose longer. So it could fill up one of the pits with water. And he's just, he's got these like sunglasses on and he looks up at the camera and he kind of looks miserable. And <laughs> like he's just been working for so long. And yeah. I was like, I was like, yeah, this could like even be like the opening clip because I filmed it on one of the little dad cams. So it's all grimy. And it's nice. just like, it's just like whatever it takes to get it done. Like yes, I love the, way, the way he works and, and, and everything about it is just like super cool. So it's so crazy thinking about how far Swamp Fest has come from just like the first year of just a shit yeah. show to like, it's an actual thing. Like Blood Wizard. I just learned Nick Sebesti just told me Blood Wizard made a Swamp Fest deck. Did you know that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, oh, I, I know nuts, all about it. Yeah, that's <laughs> fucking rad. Yeah, uh, no, but I mean, Chris Gregson, man, like, that's it's a huge like shout out to that guy because Twisto Fur, right? He's yes, yeah. he uh, you know, it's so it's so funny. A long time ago, when I saw what he was doing with the skate filming, I was like, yeah. dude, he he would be sick if he was filming like Corey or people like Trey or people who ride these setups the way that he's filming the skateboarding, and. I don't even really know exactly, but I believe through Corey, and some other things. I don't know. Oh no. And maybe, maybe it is through Trey and him coming and meeting and Trey talks about it, but like it's, he's like fully in it to a certain extent. Like he's, he's, a he's about filming this stuff. He's learning as much as he can about like bike yeah. riding. He supports it, but he's like one of the core skate filmers doing it for Thrasher. Like, he shouldn't be so it's so rad, but he yeah. is and and yeah. that's super rad to me and we've got to work together and he's been nothing but nice to me and like showing mad respect and so like what have I'm you guys worked together on crazy um so when trey was getting back on colt uh trey worked with uh him yeah. with the uh, gregson on uh his welcome video because yeah. um i was doing other stuff and it was just kind of natural because they had already worked together on the van stuff um and i think they were still working on this van's part so it just kind of made sense like well if i don't really have the time and he's gregson's kind of getting trey to some cool things to ride and like if you watch this welcome video i mean he's in all these skaters backyards riding like some of the craziest setups and yeah. things that are uh, you know i couldn't do but like um when they were in california a bit i would link up with them and uh film some second angles and then a couple of days i think i just went out with trey and filmed while uh gregson had some other stuff to do and so i got all that footage from gregson and cut it up and, and made the video and like so um Killed it. and then from then like yeah we we hung out then and then like at swamp fest we hung out and like um I don't know. Like we don't like text and chat with each other, but if I needed something, I can hit him up. And he'd be yeah. Like, yeah. It was good. So hell yeah. Dude, um, I'm so jealous of being able to film or being able to skate like that and yeah. film like that is so fucking yeah. dope. Like that's always been the dream. One time I was on a trip with Sabrosa and we were in 
some somewhere in the Pacific Northwest riding a skate park and uh, there was a, a skater there. And I said, here, bro, because he was dropping in and pushing around and I handed you my handed. camera to him and <laughs> I said, drop in and just pointed at the guys. And he did. And I spliced it all together pretty, pretty well. And uh, I got some, <laughs> some people were like, damn, dude, I didn't know you could skate like that. I was like, yeah, <laughs> no big deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I get you know, uh, like that sometimes. Don't worry about it. There's a Colt did a Florida trip with uh, Rikini, uh Dak and Hawk um not too long ago and that video actually was one of one that i really enjoyed um doing not that i don't enjoy other ones but like it was just fun pretty relaxed and whatever and dak would grab the camera from me he's like i got this and he would skate in and, and film sean do some stuff Fuck yeah. um so hopefully nobody thinks that that's me i think i even tried to film dak uh dropping in so people would see that it's not me like nice. doing that kind of stuff but yeah anytime that stuff comes around preston oker also really good at at doing that kind can of stuff. Can you skate like that? I don't know how much he's oh he do he skates good and he's been doing and he's been filming a lot more. Um so I think he's gonna kind of like step up his game with the with the the follow lines and the bowls and stuff like that. So Fuck yeah. This Florida video you're talking um, about is from like a year ago. Yeah, right? no, I wish I, I wish I could be doing that too. It's so sick. Yeah. It's uh yeah, I guess it's oh just, yeah uh, I see Dakota in there on it's the, the one where like That's awesome. Hawks jumping into that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How rad. So, I could yeah, just picture Dax saying, "I got this," and he drops it. Fun trip. That was really good. Fuck yeah. Um, the other thing, let's talk about the the backyard ramps video. What was it he like? Pretty, yeah, it pretty much. It pretty much says. What was it like? Just yeah. In general. I mean, <clears throat> okay. I can, I can, so here, I'll, yeah, I'll explain me, to you because there, there's there's a, there's a decent story to that too. Um, so, old Watsy goes, "I am I'm coming out to to Cali and help Pat." And then I, randomly, I was thinking, if he's building ramps, I wonder this time who's making the video. Like every time Pat has had an addition, it's, it's had like a video. And since they didn't do like a big whole thing, there wasn't, I guess, maybe quite the need for it in a way. And Jason's like, well, I'll get you to come out. I'll I'll pay you to I'll pay you to film it. And then my contribution is like just to edit it with no, like I didn't charge him like to edit it. So it is like a Yon production universal ramps, like kind of collab thing. Nice. And we were think we were thinking of maybe like getting some sponsors or something involved. And then once we were like in the middle of filming it, we're like, you know what? The best bet is that we just put on our BMX because that's where, uh, you know, a lot of people are going to be probably watching it and stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, that's why it ended up over there. Just, um, seem like uh instead of just putting on like my youtube channel it would it's it's not ready yet i'm like you know s still still gaining some momentum but eventually i'll get my stuff going there um but uh anyways we'll get back into the details of the uh the the video so he's like yeah just come out and uh it's funny my girlfriend like was wanting to get like a camper recently and uh my parents were selling one. So I was like, why don't we just buy that one? So we get that. And Jason's like, yeah, I got my rig. I'm just staying at Pat's house. And I was like, I'll just stay at Pat's house. So Hell I took yeah. the camper out there, posted it up right behind his and uh, just slept in there, bought food on the way in, had a little fridge. I like would go make my own lunch uh, in the middle of the day. So I spent four days at Pat's house. Um, I wasn't there for the build stuff. Uh, they all film stuff on like their phones and GoPros and stuff. And so I just pulled that footage to kind of lay the tone for the intro stuff. But yeah. really what Jason's thing was, was like wanting to do the add-ons. Like, I think he had more ideas, but we had like limited like time, you know, we just, yeah. they would build those things like the sub box or that other piece. And that was kind of like what he thought, not only did he open the park up or the, the yard up to like have a better flow to it, but now he's going to like add those pieces in and that's kind of like the universal ramps part of it, you know? And so, and whatever him and Pat could get, they could get, and then people would just show up every day and they'd be like, oh, I'll ride this. And like, W's like, I'll double whip in. And like, <laughs> I was like, I, I was like jokingly like standing at the bottom waiting for like him to feel out doing the double whip in and like any buck earth was riding this way. I was like, Fufanu it. And he's like, oh, Fufanu it. I was like, oh. So and then he Fufanu it. I was like, what? This is kind of crazy. These guys are like playing and a video so, game, dude. It's so crazy. Yeah. 
and then just what Pat and Pat and like uh, Jason were doing. And like, you kind of just follow Jason's lead. Jason goes, all right, we're doing this. And like, I could see even Pat go, okay. And <laughs> we're going to make this big structure over top of the transfer thing. And can I cab whip into it? Can I three whip into it? Like they're just sessioning, going for it. And so turns out, really yes, cool. they can do those tricks into yeah. it. Dude. The bunny hop three whip into that massive fucking dude, step down is that so was, crazy. That was a scary one. And it's so, it's one of those things with the, where the footage doesn't do things justice because like I, I'm watching it going, how can I make this look any more big? Like, yeah, because I standing up there, like I was standing on the edge of it, like going like, this is terrifying. Like, and <laughs> yeah, I, I hope he doesn't fall. Like, I know he's got it, but like the way it looks is it like it drops over like mm -hmm. that. Like, but he it's did it. It's terrifying just standing try. there, let alone yeah. jumping off of it. <clears throat> yeah. You said Universal Ramps a couple times. Is that like a company? So, is that Jason's that's company? So, uh, that's, that's Jason's company. And most of the stuff that he's doing is in Australia. Like, um, if, if if you uh linked up with him or had him on here he'll he could go on and on about all the things he's done uh over there and he spends a lot of time he's he's all it's almost like a uh it's almost like a six months on ramp building six months off riding like That's he's so just, dope just like he's living dude head into he is he stack he stacks it up comes out does what he needs to do riding wise like having fun doing his thing and then if he gets a job i mean he's He's like, he's like the way I was like, oh, I have this idea and I want to make a little thing come to life. He's like, oh, I can make an entire place. Yes. Like, he's just like, yes, I can, on, I can do that. Let's on, go. They're like full on UCI courses, you know, like full, like full blown, like crazy things. You know, another crazy part about, um, you know, since uh, a bunch of the guys that come to Pat's house, ride all these contests, there was a course in, I think Adelaide, I might have that wrong. And Pat and Jason would talk about this Adelaide course. I'm just going to keep saying it, even if it's wrong. And um, and then the the other guys come over and they see Jason. And they say, and because Jason built that course, they go, "Dude, Jason, you need to build another Adelaide course." And I'm like, I was like, "Dang, everybody's looking at Jason as like the ramp guy. Like he built okay. something. He built something that people that like riders want to ride. Like yeah, from know, across what, halfway they, across the world, and they know what's up. That's fine. Yeah, and. Uh, and so that was just like really cool. And like, I don't know. I would just wish him the best with like doing that stuff and like keeping it going and like to even reach out to me, like to, to come out and do it. Like I was like super psyched because I wondered what was going to go on with the the work they were doing, thinking like there'd be a full on video and I've done one of them and it felt like I kind of had my opportunity and that was it. And I, you know, I was like, man, I wish I could do another one. And in this case, it was so much more like relaxed because it was just like, it was just like, let's build these things and have some fun on them. And other, like I said, the other people joined in and like, I never got to work with them either. So I got to, well, I did work with Bryce Tryon like many years ago when he was real small, maybe like 10 years old. He was like the first uh, cult juvenile writer. So there's like, if nice. you went on the Vimeo page, I bet you could find him in Lodi riding like a few skate parks a video I filmed in like 2012, maybe. Like, yeah, and then a so decade later, ago. here we are. He's, That's so rad. And and he's killing it. Like I was like, his some of his clips are like my favorite, where he's just doing this long line, and it starts with like a front flip bar. And you know, I'm not a front flip bar kind of like guy. Yeah. Like, yeah, man, do you think you can get that front flip bar? <laughs> but like, they're just doing it like pop, pop, pop. And I'm like seeing them ride the way I would see Dak or somebody ride like. A street spot just like this is what they do this is how they're yeah. about it the way they're talking to each other the way they're interacting the way they're encouraging each other w on the seven it's it's two truck drivers in one set <laughs> yeah. it's not a 720 double barsman it's a truck driver truck, to truck, truck late driver. truck <laughs> Dude, it, it was so it was so cool and because he was like falling doing it that like by the time he got it there's like a genuine like cheer and I don't, I mean, I hope this doesn't sound like disrespectful, but in like a lot of videos that I feel like they might be in, I don't feel like you get to see people react. Like, right. yeah. I feel like you see like the clip and maybe you see a slow motion thing of it. But like my style, especially with the cult stuff was like when somebody did something and you, somebody was cheering, I went over to them and it added a little extra. Fuck and yeah. I felt like, I felt like that was in this video too, where everybody was hyped. And the yep. other, but as he did battle for it, it was pretty crazy. Like, it's so dope.
So, man, I love it. Yeah. I wish I could watch them ride in person. That, that's so nuts. Um, yeah, it was it was pretty wild, definitely. I want to know about your outside of BMX work, Bish. What's what's been going on? What what's your tell me tell me how work's going? How are you getting? Um, how are you getting jobs? And how are the jobs going? Well, I feel like I need to learn how to get jobs better. I need to learn how to like put uh, my proposals together or understand value better. Um, yeah. my, my time slash the value I can give to a client. Yeah. Um, so I used to work at Fullerton Bikes, which I literally live like pretty close to now. So since I'm back in the area, I pop in there every once in a while. And that was Mike Franzi, who owns the shop. He was like the first person who really like put me on to uh, filming because when he saw me mess around with some BMX stuff, he was like, oh, we should get a camera and a computer and you can make videos for the bike shop. And that led to me doing everything else. Right. Yeah. So to come back over there and he pretty much tries to get me to do a video a month for him. Um, it seems like we're at that rate. I shot um, some mountain biking stuff today. Um, and now I'm flying my drone a bunch, which is like helping get like some really cool shots. Um, again, I have a gimbal that I still haven't used and I don't even know where the charger is for the battery. So <laughs> I got to figure this, I got to figure this out because I was running today with the thing, like up this hill over these like roots, like it was like, bop, 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 bop. and I was like, I really hope I can smooth cam this. Cause this is not, <laughs> I, what am I doing? But like, as soon as the, I'm using the drone like a gimbal right now, oh, I'm nice. flying it yeah. at like, Level, low enough to where it looks like a gimbal. through tr and through trees and stuff Dude, i almost crashed it like three times today out of like just being stupid like i was reversing it and went oh and i forgot there were trees behind me and it like stops right in front of a tree yeah. and then there's the dude it's yeah it's, <laughs> but i got some cool shots um and I've, I've been messing with it a bunch and like it's been super fun but like one of the things that i can't really figure out for like doing this kind of work is like like think if i was just going to be a drone pilot, right? So, hey, I need a drone pilot. Okay, that's going to be 500 bucks for a day rate. Okay, cool. I go out, I fly the drone, I give them the footage. They go, okay, that's cool. But then if they want the video that's maybe got a whole direction to it, a few days to it, then they want it edited. And then I'm like, oh, it's going to be X amount of money. It kind of, that kind of goes, nah, where I'm like, this is so much more work. And, but like, yeah, if I had this one little thing I did, you could understand paying for that, but you don't seem to, un people don't seem to understand paying for yeah. other things. That's why I have to, I just have to, that's why I, I'm trying to go in with the YouTube thing and work harder on like um, showing, showing it as almost showing the BMX stuff, but also showing it as a production company and yeah. like putting more like behind the scenes and kind of stuff in there. And that's yeah. why I like doing the BMX event and showing that it's just, breaking me like breaking the wall down of me going from like oh i make this kind of video to okay i can show more of a behind the scenes video and i can put myself in front of it so hopefully people will want to tune in and follow along with me on things and then maybe that will turn into more jobs um you know oh, yeah dakota writes for that brand salty yeah and we just did we just did some like real stuff um, Sick. and they paid me for that and that turned out really well. And I'm, I'm hoping that, that, that door leads to some more projects. Um, and then like my dad is in this like Beatles cover band that, um, is that they're really good. And they went in the studio and they did like a, like a full recording. And so I filmed them do that. And, uh, I've been breaking down like each song into like things for them to use on social, but the thing I'm going to make for myself to put on my channel is I filmed them the whole recording thing. So when they're like working the song out and they're like messing around on the piano, working out, they're singing together and like all this stuff, I'm trying to make it feel like more of a, like a Beatles documentary than just like, Sick. here's the performance of the song That's awesome. in the studio. I so those are like some of the things that I've been doing. Um, it's kind of hard for me to remember some of the other jobs and stuff, but the stuff for bands is, is, is work too that I've been doing oh. like Dax song and, and those kinds of things. So yeah, I love um, that. all that stuff's kind of led me to this point where I don't really have something other than like the mountain bike stuff for the bike shop. And that's where it felt like the right time to do this BMX event. Oh, and to be honest, one other thing that I was really hoping could happen in this me going like to the freelance world is that when Colt needs me for something that I could be there to do it. 
Yep. And we're going to Colorado right after the BMX event. Hell right yeah. Be- right before uh, the Fast and Loose premiere. So nice. uh, we're filming a trip with Corey and a bunch of other people. And so I get to do kind of just what I was doing where we're filming. I edit the video up. I put it out like relatively quickly. Like, so it's like kind of like, here's the trip. Here's the video. And um, and I think that's going to be a pretty awesome trip. Fuck and, yeah. Like, good for you, dude. You know, Life is I'm good see, right you know, now. It, it it's not bad. Like with the BMX event, I started getting some purpose and some motivation, and it made me like kind of see something to work towards. And it kind of like even made other things in my life easier. Like I don't know, I just got some motivation going on, and I want to just keep it up. And then with you know, some of that comes from just trying to stay on my diet of like you know not eating tons of sugar and carbs and and getting my body right and getting my mind right. Yeah. Because if I if I overdo it in, in, in some places, I guess go into a slump and then I don't even like, I couldn't even take on doing this event. Yeah. So right now I'm like, Oh, I have no choice. And even when I do want to like have something that I probably shouldn't have, I kind of just go, dude, you got to build a ramp tomorrow. It's going to suck. You, yeah, you, you better, don't want to feel like shit you, tomorrow. You, you better, you, you, you get not only going to build a ramp, you got to film yourself, build a ramp and you got to go home and turn around and make the video. It's like a lot on top of each other. And so, it's kept me like focused and, yeah. and with the response I'm getting back, it's, it's, it's telling me that I can like, I can make this thing that I've had in my head actually kind of happen. And and I, at, at one point I, I wasn't sure. And, but I do realize that it's in this day and age, it's probably harder than ever um, to do this because like, you know, it's not a YouTube boom. It's social media is kind of played like it's just, but that's why the event, is such a big deal because you have to get out in front of people and do something like yeah and like, and show people are so and show hungry an for in person events right now like that's what's yeah. lacking because we have all yeah. the shit that you could ever ask for on the internet but like in person events are more rare and so I don't know local video contests like Zach Bailey yep. just put one on that was so rad like I'm trying to get him to do one for the summer um what else like jams you know like yeah. the BMX you, event go to did that. you did you go to the King thing. Uh, yeah, I went and met up with yeah. the boys. That that's so rad that they went around and just had sessions with everybody. I love that. that. That's that's what I'm saying. Like like by the time I left, doing... my face hurt so bad from smiling, just seeing everybody. You know, like it, yeah. the, the whole scene came to it, and it was it was so rad. Like shaking, giving everybody hugs, and seeing Nathan again, and meeting Santi was so rad. And yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I I had I had talked to Casey over the internet, so seeing him in person and watching him ride was unbelievable. Yo, I and, bet. Yeah. yeah. And some, always, some locals that came out of the woodwork that like haven't ridden in 15 years and were trying the craziest shit. Like there was a kicker on top of the wedge and this dude mm-hmm. just like, I know him from like going to Glendale when I was 16 years old, but I yeah. can't really, I, whatever. And he's out there, he hasn't ridden in a decade and he's out there sending a 180 from the top of the wedge off of a kicker to flat and like eating shit. It was amazing. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's what, that's what's kind of cool. No, I, I'm, I'm hoping that that same kind of vibe comes through for, BMX event and anybody else who's like putting anything on it and going out and doing stuff because I mean yeah like the internet is great and that's a great tool to like get the word out and this and that but like the actual interaction I'm, I'm very excited to see um who shows up and like I, I don't know I think the response feels like people are wanting to go to have a good time and I think it's going to happen. Like it's going to be, I think, dude. I think the ramps are going to be good and that's going to be fun. But I also think that there's going to be a good like camaraderie between everybody. And yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about like, it. Like so. picture worst case scenario, your van catches on fire and all the ramps are well, gone. The event is still going to be great. You know, bro, like, what? <laughs> Fuck oh, on wood. Man. Chill out. Yeah, the wood that's burning just, in my van. I'm just saying <laughs> if everything goes to shit, it's still going to be great. You got nothing to worry yeah, about. Well, We'll pull it together, but... <laughs> you say, whoa, man, mm-hmm. don't jinx me. This is wood. You're good. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> nah, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be good. Man, why'd you say that? Nah. Whoa, man. Um, You took a, something that was just an idea in your brain, and now it's going to come to reality. That's, like, that's really cool. I think a lot of people, like, don't make that happen. And uh, to, because that's what, that's how everything starts, you know? Like, the cell phone was just mm-hmm. an idea in somebody's head or any anything and uh well it's not revolutionary it's not revolutionary but at the same time the thing i felt like i was up against is like like why would i do the event like and then it really was just like let's 
get it together or like how could I do it and then I went with the crowdfunding and then I mean I rolled that into yes an awareness for the yawn stuff and like growing that stuff but like that's just because I want to do positive things if that can grow it'll let me do more positive things for BMX and yeah. other stuff so what kind of thoughts were you having when it started like were you reluctant like who am I to do this type shit or what well no it's just made it is easier like if I was still like working at Colt, it would be like, oh, Colt, let's throw a jam. But right. when you're just like a guy, you're like, oh, yeah, you're just a jam. guy. Like, <laughs> like, and I could have gone, I could have gone to him and been like, oh, let's, let's do the jam. But then it would, I feel like I was like, why don't I figure this stuff out? Mm -hmm. And instead of like putting it on somebody else, I'll figure out how to get the ball rolling. And then if I need help, I can ask for help. And I got right away, people came to me and were like, yeah, let's help. And in my head, I was like, already wanting to make it a tour like again i'm i had the one idea that i have to execute but i'm already thinking well, like yeah way beyond it and and so yeah I'm, I'm pretty happy with like how things are are like kind of playing out so it's fucking um, awesome dude. yeah i don't exactly know how much more i could talk about the bmx event um <laughs> we, i because, think we beat it we beat it up <laughs> yeah i mean now it's kind of like now it's kind of one of these things where you just like start begging people to subscribe to your YouTube channel <laughs> and following you on Instagram and watching the videos lead mm -hmm. up to it. So the other thing that I do think would be cool is going to be cool about it is that I'm going to take pieces from all, all the videos and put them into the recap so that it has a taste and a trail all the way to the recap video That's right. um, and try and get that going. And then the other piece of it was like, you know, I, I don't know how you make stuff work financially in this world, but I'm like, can I make a Patreon happen? Can I like, and I can't even make videos consistently for myself. How could I ask somebody to pay me for stuff? Yeah. So by like doing this behind the scenes thing makes me think, well, maybe there's people that would be down for a Patreon. Right. And if I succeed in this, it's proof of concept that I could do it. So that just lets me put my effort more into yawn stuff and using yawn media and, and that production kind of company thing uh come to life and you know the goal is to kind of put more awareness of that out there and do what i call i don't even know if this anybody calls it this but i call it 360 uh production where i can film something edit it make the music and even do graphics if needed so i can I, essentially it feels like it would work my way into like commercials for people maybe not like on tv but like campaign style right yeah. instagram stuff right and so i'm like kind of trying to work my way towards that where hopefully i can get something that maybe uh outside bmx company has a nice little check they can give me yeah. and then i get to do a month's worth of work and then take a couple of weeks off to be heavy into bmx and kind of pull a watt style like yeah do the work do the work boom 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 that's definitely and the then, dream with video production i've been thinking about that of just like doing yeah. one video per month but charging 15 grand for it you know like and there's yeah. people out there doing that you know like that's that's you why have I'm like all the talent to do it like there's people way less talented than you that are out there making 20 grand per video you know it's not to me the talent that somebody might have but how do they get the those things yeah. to happen how and do they get those clients there's things that i have to learn to kind of figure that out but one of the um, steps you mentioned earlier that somebody was like not down to pay for extra services and were but they were okay with paying 500 for a drone you just got to keep walking past those people you know like that those aren't they they aren't it you know well that's the thing but like when you don't have income you you yeah you, you gotta take what you can get yeah you you do but then i'm drowned with the things that have more work than the and less yep. profit and then now i have nothing going on for yawn like yep. the thing i'm trying to help build it out so yeah. then DoorDash comes into place because what DoorDash does is it doesn't burn me out. And if I got to go on a trip with Colt for a week, I'm not, I don't have a job. Like right. I can turn that off. And, you know, so that's like, that's like a, a cool thing to have to just earn some money. I don't love it. It's not great. The I would love it if I was finding spots. So far I found right. like no spots. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's real. It, if I was like finding spots left and right, then it would be like, all right, let's go out on the weekend and go film some stuff. But I, that's not happening. And like, right. it's just like, by the end of the day, I sat in a car for eight hours. And I'm like, what is, yeah. when is this? Like, hey, how so much can you I'm make thinking, in eight hours? A hundred? Dude, it, no, you should make more than that. Because the first time I did it, I made over a hundred bucks in six hours. 
Nice. Okay. And I just had a bad, I had a bad day on the, on the day that I went out on yeah. the video. Like, and I thought I was going to make more than a hundred bucks easily to be like, I had a genuine reaction at the end of the video when I was over a hundred dollars by 53 cents because it said 80 bucks and I didn't understand how the app updates the thing. I thought it was like in real time when you get it or something. And then it was like, Oh, you're done. And I'm like, shoot, sure, didn't do it. And it was $153. Like, <laughs> well, I did do it. Okay. <laughs> but like the last time I made like 130 bucks in six hours and you know, it depends on people's tips uh, yep. and then it depends on how frequent your orders are. And then they, it depends on like, if you get a, so I started the reason if you do it at night, I feel like you get more orders between people who are hungry for dinner slash maybe having a couple of drinks, maybe smoking some substances, you know, things like that go on. Yeah. And you and now you're starting to pick up milkshakes and things at night. You're like, okay, I see what's going on here. <laughs> and, and then you, um, you, uh, you get these double ones and like, I, I don't know, some people tip better than others. And then depending if like how far they are and then like the dollar amounts you get, like I've watched some videos on it and people are like, yeah, the, the dollar amount needs to double the mileage you're going to be driving. But then the DoorDash does this thing where it says it's going to give you less, like less um, good, like DoorDashes if you don't, if you keep ignoring the ones that are kind of bad. Huh. And, Cause, and so it keeps telling me my ratings going down and I'm new. To it, so I'm like, all right, I'll just start taking every one so I can get my rating up. And then, so then I'm not making as much money. And then the one that I did during the day, I hit the lunch rush and then it just stalled out. And then the dinner came back, but then like you have like only a certain amount of time you could like work unless it's like really busy, then they'll like keep you on. But like by eight o'clock at night, it just was like, there's no more work to do. And I was already burnt out that day and I was just like done with it. So I haven't Man. had to hit it since then because I've just been on the thing. But like, yeah. it's like, the reason I wanted to do it is so I didn't burn myself out on making videos because yeah. I was making videos for somebody else and not making my own videos. But now yeah. I have a different approach to how I'm making the videos. And, um, how so? you know, the, um, not needing it to be a hundred percent good. The, fir the, the first videos I'm making are, are, are not great. I like the, they're, I'm just filming what's going on with the BMX event. I'm doing whatever, like, right. um, whatever's going on. I do like the one that I just made with Dak and I decided since I'm not monetized, like I'm just going to use a banger song. And so I just was, like, I'll throw this Nirvana song on there and well, like, yeah. let's just go for it. And once it is monetized, I'll switch it up. But like, it's like, what's the point at this point if it doesn't hurt my channel, like let's make a better, let's get a better song underneath it than like me making something for it. Like, yeah. Um, and that feels more fun. You get to add it to a Nirvana song. Yeah. And exactly and i'm hoping that that hooks people in a little bit more and like keeps them watching uh yep. but at the same time hopefully by the time i'm done with it I've, I've learned to edit faster i've learned to let go of mistakes or i like know what to do so i'm not making the same mistakes again right. um i'm getting away with like covering up my mistakes by putting those uh uh text cards in between um it's like really helping me just be like okay i don't know what to do here okay, I'll make this into a joke, like, or I'll ask a question and now we could resolve. So now you know what's going on with the screen. Like, because Hell yeah. we start, we were, we were measuring a thing on a slant. We were measuring a slant on a slant instead of flat. Like, I, I don't know, <laughs> kinds of things. You want to know awesome, something dude. funny? Uh, you want to know something funny about the DoorDash video? Yeah. Um, half of it's fake. So the day I went out DoorDashing, all the stuff that's pointing at me and anything I have where I have like real, like, a food in my hand like the i don't know the chick-fil-a or whatever it is i had this real and then when i was editing the video i was like looking for a i was looking for more of like a sound effect on line like and i was typing in like racing the clock and then the song came in that when it's like gotta beat the clock gotta beat the clock or whatever it says and yeah. i was like man if i had footage of me like hustling this would be like kind of funny <laughs> so i just put this sweatshirt back on and grabbed the orange bag and then went out and drove up to restaurants went inside people would say hello and i'd walk right back out of the restaurant <laughs> and get back in the van and then so anything with the orange bag in my hand is just from a different day Amazing. and i just went back and i put my I, I filmed everything with a gopro i put the gopro on a tripod and stuck it by the wheel of the car and i was like driving and like pulling in and getting all these shots set the Hell tripod yeah. up running out i wasn't doing that i i realized i could do that but the day i was actually door dashing i did not have the energy like 
the motivation i was like so concerned about door dashing and like and like updating the camera on what was going on i didn't think about like setting up a shot of getting in and getting out because i just want to get to the house drop the food off and get to the next place so i literally drove around a little neighborhood and w- would park get out of the car get back in the car drive to a different part of the neighborhood park get out of the car get back <laughs> in the car there's all these shots of me running to someone's driveway and then running back to the house and i never <laughs> dropped off food it's all just fake door dashing so that's uh, next level it, dude you went back and ru- did it hopefully i didn't ruin it for anyone well i almost had nothing to edit if i didn't have all that stuff in there that video would be pretty boring like <laughs> That I don't know. I I thought like it, it just clicked in my head and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go do this. So see, even when you're trying to take a break from making videos and do your work as a DoorDash, you're still making videos about it. You know, it never ends. Videos, videos, videos. I wouldn't I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have made the DoorDash video if I didn't want to like show an incentive promote that, the like, BMX event and and even show that like, all right, let's do whatever it takes like Again, I do the door dashing to pay my bills, but like this time I was like, all right, I'll donate my earnings to the BMX event. And um, I don't know. It was just, I felt like it was a cool way to like show that even I'm trying to raise money besides just asking people to do it, you know? So. <laughs> dude, I love it. <laughs> I'm watching it right now as, we, as, we, as we're speaking, dude. So if <laughs> you guys aren't following Yawn Media on YouTube, you'd go subscribe you freaking nerds i've had people yeah. like reach out to me i stopped calling everybody nerds on this podcast like i stopped <laughs> stopped that intro and then i've had like five kids reach out to me from europe and all over the country saying what's up i'm a bmx nerd and i'm like fuck yeah dude all right i'll keep keep calling you guys nerds it's awesome at least at least you got like a a, a little thing going that came like naturally yeah like, that's that's pretty came together dude and, and uh, yeah i don't know on that it's this is episode 70 which is like really I, yeah i just had a wow. like whoa it's almost Dang. been yeah I'm, i don't i haven't even done the math with how many it's been with for a dig but this is it's going and okay. still going yeah. 70 70 from the original yeah 70 from no when notes? i very first started yeah with okay, ryan chadwick cool, cool. the first episode wow. i forget how many i had when dig hit me up but it wasn't 70 that's for sure yeah 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 this, no, this shit's I mean, a trip <laughs> when uh when dig when dig got involved did it help you kind of stay focused on yeah fuck like, yeah it like gave me validation done? basically you know like yeah kind of yeah. like oh okay this is real you know it's yeah like i started doing it again on my own and that felt really cool and i think yep. daryl was the first one where i, I brought it back because it had been Dude, like i remember i years. remember listening to that one yeah. like I, I tuned in like right away when i saw that was up yeah and we were talking yeah. a bunch when i brought it back and then we did one together mm-hmm. when we when i brought it back and uh yeah i don't know that when dig came on it was just like all kinds of momentum and then there was three in a row where it was like dakota rat boy and edwin at three in a row and i was just like what the fuck is this this is so cool <laughs> like i get to talk yeah. to my heroes so it's, dude you, you know, know what i you know what i really like was the Corey one like yeah Corey i fucking Walsh love Corey, dude. I, that was yeah. that to me i was like i thought that was a really good one i mean obviously he's a good friend of mine but like i don't know i just i f- felt like that was a really yeah. cool i love talking to him dude. i had never really yeah. had a talk with him like like that long you know yeah yeah, yeah. so um dang dude well <laughs> you know i always have it in the back of my head to to do one but i have it i have zero done but uh, <laughs> podcast, yeah fuck yeah, yeah i want to go well, on somebody else's I mean, podcast I feel like, soon well you'll have to come online at some point because like i have to do it because i think that like I, it's just like a another way to to keep something positive for bmx going on and i yep. mean i'd i'd love to have kind of a different angle in, in that way like every all these podcasts that are out have a little different something when you're you're tuning into them and i would, I would love to talk more and uh do it into some of the video nerd stuff i mean i i want to say that that's going to happen after this bmx event because like i'm proving to myself that i could do it and i could be consistent i could figure it oh, out yeah. and so seeing somebody like you get on it and do it and like kind of like that's just encouraging so okay. I, I definitely think i need to i'm going to wait till the event's over but at the same time <laughs> it feels like i need something to be doing something with yawn after the event and uh it seems like it's something i can work into uh like keeping going you know as well as other things but like 
You know? Yeah, like for a brand, I think a podcast is a good idea. Like even if it's not every True. week or like super often, but like the yawn, the yawn podcast would be just something really cool to have established. And who knows, you know, it, it could blow up and then I don't know, you yeah. get clients, you, you find that $15,000 client and then you put, bring them on the podcast and do outside, whatever. I'm not telling you. How to I'm, I'm, I'm listening, I'm listening to uh, people on a podcast. It's called like the 505 podcast. And these, okay. these people go on like to- tours with DJs and, uh, and those things lead to other jobs, but they're like, really like they're talking like they're in the world I want to be in where yeah. they get to travel and do documentary kind of work. Um, it's like a mix of like documentation, like for like a YouTube thing and, you know, making sure there's like social stuff and, and, yeah. and all this stuff going on. But when they talk about that work, they're like literally talking about the kind of work that I want to be doing where it's, it's for a brand or an artist or yeah. a musician or something. And you're like helping highlight their highlights. Like the I can totally that, see that you doing so that cool. in the music industry, dude. Like yeah. when you were talking about yeah. it earlier and talking about the 360 production or just like how you're going to do documentary style coverage of your BMX event, like that mm-hmm. it, immediately I was just like, Oh, he should be on the road with like DJs. Like, uh, you know, that there's big money in, Cover. And actually, I don't know firsthand if there is big money there, but like there, traveling there is with, with the right people. Yeah, 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 there is with the right people. And, um, you know, one of the guys is talking about how like that led him to working with like a on a on an NBA photo shoot. And like yep. they, they were all tripping on how he got to work with him. And his story, the other guy's story was that like in college, he was just filming the parties. And then that some of the DJs got bigger. And then they have, you know, like A&Rs and people like that going like, Oh, come work with us. Like, can yep. you just do this thing? And then the one dude said he was thinking he thought he was going on a one day shoot. And then the guy got back to him. He's like, Yeah, so it'll probably be like three months. Like, you heard <laughs> that? And he's like, What? We're going on tour? And like, so yeah, like you never, you never really know. But like it's, it, I think, it's all about who you know or it like all the work that I got when I was freelance all mm-hmm. came from just like working with one person and that person introduced me to another person and yep. who introduced me to another yep. and another and another like i never had to go market myself or like go you know create an ad online or some shit but yeah and i'm hoping that i don't have to do that either so yeah, the, it'll the mountain bike the mountain bike video thing that i'm working on for the bike shop the uh owner mike his son brent who i've worked with before who's like really good at like it's kind of like the gravel bike stuff where it's like uh it's like mountain and road kind of mixed together well giant bicycles kind of like has them like flowed so he's you know he got a bike for free uh he got a bike through them he's like kind of representing them but like he's not like on a team kind of thing but um what they wanted to do was have me make this video for the bike shop that in turn would go through giants uh like boom instagram and stuff like that and so the hope is that like, if I do well on this, that there could be a door opening there or there could be a door opening with a different bike company. And there's a few different bike companies that when I get, if I could get into that like road mountain kind of world yeah. where it's like taking my BMX experience and kind of doing that similar kind of thing, but they got bigger budgets and they got like other things going on that like, I didn't really ever see going out to do but when it's like when i watch some of the videos and see some of the things on like a brand like envy or like um giant or whatever i'm like oh this looks like it'd be fun to do i can do this kind of stuff yeah and if if i can then do that and then when i get that money come back over into the bmx world and enhance yeah something about it like that's pretty much the goal so i think we're all rooting for you dude that's fire well that's and awesome. the fact that you can do 360 production is such an a, like a cool part that like for big corporations yeah. they want cleared yeah. music and you're like oh by the way I'm, I'm oh, just, yeah. I scored this you know I scored yes. this documentary like this 10 minute really well done documentary that's it's fire dude here's also, a, here's an I go oh, go ahead go ahead. all right I'll go I'll go and then you, you go, go. <laughs> okay, you you me you me you me, me. Um, <laughs> no you okay no, you. so uh, what I was what I was telling uh, that dude Brent today that I was working with, I was like, I was like, I don't understand how people like really do make money. Cause I had a really good time filming today. And I was just like, I wish money didn't matter. Cause then I yeah. just wake up tomorrow and I would do this again. And yep. we try to go get these shots. And like, it's funny. Cause with the, on this video that I did with him, I scouted these areas that like, 
I'm like, oh, I could fly the drone here and we could get this bridge shot underneath this bridge and we could do all this stuff. And it's like finding spots. Like, yeah, I was like, all right, this is cool. Like, we'll just, we do all this. And I was like, man, I'm having such a good time. I was like, you know what I should do? I should make a video of me trying to hire production companies to do what I think I could do and be like, yeah, how much is that going to be? Okay. Yes, dude. Blah, 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 days. Okay. Holy shit. And then, and then I call up and go, Hey, I need a custom song. Okay. What's that going to be? Okay. That's going to be this. And then get this number. That's 10 or 15 grand and go, yes, I could do this for seven or like whatever yep. it really is worth. And, and be like, why can't I get that job? Like, and it's just, it's just, I'm just figuring that stuff out. Like, yeah. You know, um, that's a big hurdle to get over is like the value, valuing yourself and like yeah. figuring out what to cost yeah. or what to charge but or at, what the value but is. But at, at the same time, customer. even if I were to say like, oh, that's my value. And I went to like a BMX brand. I understand how that works. And that isn't like fair to them in a way. Like it doesn't really make sense in that regard. Yeah, so for BMX, I'm not it's, trying, it's a different thing. I'm not trying to even even a smaller company that isn't like a um, somebody who's like a catering truck or like something, you know, like. Yeah, but like a I small am trying, mom and I am business. trying, I am trying to get into the specialized or giant or or GT or somebody who's like got something like that going on where they're gonna be spending that to get that. Well, right. I could be the guy who get it to get it to you, and I'm gonna do my best to take your vision of what you need and what I think is effective and make it as quality as I can and as quickly as I can. And if I can make a custom song, hopefully that has impact. Like even today we were on this trail and there's like all these roots and he's like riding up the hill and it's like, God, 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 God. And I, I did the thing where I was saying, I, I ran with the camera and I was like, man, I hope this smooth cams out. And when yeah. I got done, we looked at the shot. It was like, it was all right. I was like, I just make the song really aggressive right there. I'll go like, dur, 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 dur. Yes. <laughs> and he was like, all right. So that's how I make it work is just go like, okay, I need it to go weird here. Or it's going to go weird here. It's like, going to go weird. Here. You know, so. <laughs> yep. I love that. Yeah. What I was going to say is uh, editing. Like, how are you open? I guess I, I could ask you this off the podcast, but are you open for editing work? Like, would you do Dude. outside of BMX editing work? At this it point? depends. You have it so depends. much on your plate. I'm sure you don't want to. No, I mean, I'm I'm open to outside of BMX editing work. I'm, I'm trying to expand into other things. It just kind of like depends. Like there's certain things that kind of just drag me down and then, yeah like, editing is a bitch too or there's things that i feel like maybe i'm not that good at like as far as like um you know certain styles of like uh especially like social media content right. like like there's like a way that they're done that like you know the thing that got me into editing to begin with was making the bmx video and other people i feel like they see like oh this is how you make a cool social media video Right. And I don't really know it like that. Like, yeah. I don't really know how to put the hook first or like how to like do all these like retention things or like, dude, do I like remember that kind of like stuff. when we first met, I don't know, 15, 14 years ago, I like these social media videos with the big text that pops up didn't exist. And it was yeah. a better, it was a better world back then. Dude. <laughs> now everything you scroll in, it's just like big loud but here, words all over the but, screen. But here's what I'm saying <clears throat> that. It's a, I'm sure it's effective and it works, but I feel like it's already changing. Yeah. So like people are over it you, already. It, it, that's so I, 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 I feel like it's like, yeah, you go into the one thing and I may, I'm maybe not that good at this thing with the big text and all this stuff and, and like putting emojis on the screen and making yeah. the sound effects. Like I could do it, but I kind of just would rather go DoorDash, like in a way, yeah, unless, straight up. unless I'm making a good, a good amount of money, but like, not. It doesn't, like the, the people making those videos aren't charging that much for that, you know? That, that's what I mean. That's why I want a bigger, like almost like campaign where, okay, part of it, I cut out the things, but there's like an overall, like a bigger theme to it yeah. or something that has like direction. I guess overall, I want to, I want to get to a directing point where yes. it's like, Hey, we have this product and we're going to do this. And then I go, okay, so what is your brain? What do you do? Okay. Oh, what's your values? And they go, oh, it's this and that. Okay, well, how do we bring that up so that people aren't just not just looking at the product you're selling? They're going, I'm buying their product. That's a cool product, and that's a cool brand. Let's yeah continue to work with that product. Like I love thinking like that. Like I love that. So too. that's why it's hard for me to just like go make something that's like whatever. Um, yeah, I'd rather go make spec commercials where like I'm gonna do this with Salty. Like I did a thing for them and, and that was fine. It was Dak talking, but like, if you go on Salty's Instagram, 
they have uh the the bottles of their uh their drinks and they'll have like fruit around them and they have like a certain color scheme going on and i'm like hmm how can i bring this to life and then if i go look into salty's uh mission statement and their uh and what it is they're about yeah like yeah. you're already seeing the colors you're seeing like okay well can i like can I like slow motion some fruit around and like make it like come to life and, and do some studio shots and hang some strawberries from strings and like, you know, yes. can we, like, can we do this? That's what I want to put on you on. And then I'll just give salty the end product. Like here, I made these things. And if they go, Oh, why don't we work That's together? And something? Yeah. Do it again. Let's do it. Or another brand sees my thing and goes, Hey, we have a drink. Then I go, oh, yeah, what's up? Let's go hang out. Fuck yeah, dude. And uh, so that's kind of the concept after the BMX event. It's like now I'm getting Yawn off the ground in the place that I probably should have in the beginning of the year when I started it. But I was just kind of like going through the motions of like, what am I doing? And yeah. eventually I realized that I need to really like kick it in gear. And I was like, let's do the BMX event. So Fuck yeah. Do you have an LLC for Yawn? Yeah, wrap it all the way back to the beginning. Uh, of the BLA's, but uh, well, it's Yana LLC. Um, it's in it's in it's in progress because at the moment there wasn't anything going on with it, but now that there is, it's got to be it's got to be done up correctly. Yeah. So, dude, that's but, that's a yeah. I hate that part of the, the business, you know, but it's part well, of it. You got to do it. Well, luckily, you got Dayana to help it, you. Uh, it'll 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 happen but at yeah at one point it was like <laughs> diana <laughs> diana De- and <laughs> oh man i fucked it up i just again, got dude. i just got a uh thing that says my internet connection's unstable ah you're all right you're still here mm. we've, we've gone long enough though i think that's a good episode i'm not even gonna ask you the, right. the cheesy podcast questions right. i ask the, the, I think we've already. Who are you? All that kind of stuff. You like it? No, stop. We're not doing Mount Rushmore. <laughs> We're not doing that's, it. That's what I said. Um, that, this that's is what I said. We're not a, doing it. Okay, your internet is bad. You didn't hear. I me. know. That's what I said. We're not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man. Well, why? How are you so crispy? Like, I got, got a A seven S two R filming. A seven S two as oh. the webcam. With and a, then that's plugged in. That's plugged in your. Yeah, Cam so or your computer just straight plugged in with a mini USB to USB, and there's a uh, software that you download called Sony Imaging Edge Webcam. Okay, and uh, turns it into a webcam. Like, and I don't All have right. to change the battery ever. It like charges it at the same time that it uh, oh. uses it as a webcam. It's real nice. Like some and people have is... to do like a dummy battery in it and bring the mm. HDMI out with a Cam Link 4K and turn it into a proper webcam. But this Sony image this you know whatever software is pretty fire like it's nice and your this mic is usb or it's running into like an interface interface and, and i got the, the okay. scarlet like a scarlet or something yeah okay okay so i have an interface so i could have had a like nice mic going yeah 100 mm. percent. okay yeah next time i'll be all crispy it may even be crispier than you <laughs> oh shit no, out crispy me playing. <laughs> i'm playing but yeah, yeah. I got the special advantage of having Trip in the background. You know, he's he's my guy, and that's what makes it super crispy. Oh yeah, and I'm coordinated as fuck. That. Look at all these orange yep. colors, dude. We got burn slow. <laughs> we got my shirt. We got the the little pink Himalayan salt lamp and the orange in the light. Dude, I'm crispy, man. I'm coordinated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh shit! Mm-hmm. All right, that's it, everybody. Beach, it's been a pleasure. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to go to you, bed. No. All right. <laughs> Goodbye, go to everybody. Bed and I'm going to work on more stuff later. Fuck yeah. Go work <laughs> on more stuff. All right, nerds. Thanks for watching another episode of Canode Knows. Uh, shout out Dig BMX. And uh, I will see you next week.